I'm joined now by Israel's ambassador to the UK, Zippy Hotovelli. Good morning. We, Good we morning, last Trevor. spoke on October the 8th, within 24 hours of the Hamas attack. Um, some people had hoped for an extension of the truce. But let's just deal with some facts for a moment. That's obviously failed. Do you know how many hostages remain in Gaza? First, first of all, it's Hamas that failed this pause. And the reason is he's still holding uh, 15 women, two children. One of them is a 10-month baby, Kfir Bivas. I think he became the most famous baby all around the world with his red hair. And they're in charge of bringing back all the other hostages. We have over 100 hostages still in the hands of Hamas. And they're the ones who uh, start firing on Israeli cities and Israeli towns on Friday. And we need, we need to make sure that Hamas understands that we, we, we mean serious when we say any games will be, um, you know, fighted back by Israel. And we're back fighting because it seems like Hamas was not serious when he said, um, we'll, we'll release the, the women and children. So how do you... If I may ask this then, how do you expect to get those hostages back? Because they're saying you can't have any negotiations over hostages while you're still raining missiles down on us. You're saying that we can't talk to these people. Just speak of it, specifically thinking about the hostages. There are people in Israel who would say you're abandoning them. Absolutely not, actually. Uh, but. What we realised this week, when we saw the first hostages coming back home, when we saw their faces, when, and we, they're sharing their stories, and unfortunately, Hamas didn't do that from goodwill. They're not a humanitarian organisation, as you know. They're a terror organisation. They brutally tortured the people that uh, they kept hostage. Uh, this is a war crime. We need to make, make sure everyone understands Hamas committed a war crime by taking those innocent people at the 7th of October as hostages. And when they're coming back, what, what we realise is the only thing that made Hamas get into this negotiation, uh, joined with the Qataris and the Americans, was the fact that Israel was with its troops on the ground in Gaza. Only this uh, invasion that Israel uh, brought the, uh, Hamas to release our hostages. So it's actually the other way around. When we don't put military pressure on Hamas, we get nothing. When we put military pressure on Hamas, Hamas starts to feel the pressure, and then the negotiation started. But military pressure thus far, you don't have to accept Hamas's numbers on this, but military pressure, as you put it, has resulted in the deaths of, what, 10,000 more people in Gaza. And I'm wondering, if I come back to your aim to get the hostages back, how what Israel is doing now is going to contribute to that. If you're saying that actually the only way to make progress is to do what you're doing now, isn't the possible outcome of this that there will be tens of thousands of deaths in Gaza and you don't get the hostages back either? So, Trevor, we need to go back to the 7th of October to understand what exactly Israel is doing. Israel is making sure that Hamas won't exist in the Gaza Strip. The, the, the war had two aims. Uh, one is to make sure that all Hamas capabilities are dismantled, and the second is to bring our hostages back. And my point is and, that and some, the of military pressure... some of the hostages' families are saying that actually you're putting that objective, destruction of Hamas, ahead of bringing them home. No, because we think those aims are not contradiction, uh, in contradiction. But, but basically, when you put uh, the military pressure on Hamas, you, move pro you make a progress both on you know, destroying Hamas capabilities. Now, I, I, want, I want to speak something. You, you made um, uh, also, like many other journalists, you're just starting to understand the uh, amount of sexual violence that Hamas committed against innocent women. I must raise that because sure. it took over 50 days to the UN Women Organization to condemn something that is so clear. We just saw in The Guardian today, in The Sunday Times, we saw clear testimonies on women that... Uh, being raped, and some of the testimonies are speaking about women being raped and then being murdered brutally. So one of the articles said, rape is rape. So why and how come? It took 50 days to the UN Women Organization to deal with that. So Hamas was part of its plan to use this sexual violence against women, and we want to make sure 
the world understand what we're dealing with and what we're facing with. Hamas brutally murdered and raped innocent women. And this type of mentality to terrorize innocent people, to terrorize the entire Israel, this is something that was part of his psychological warfare. We're not going to let this type of, of crimes to be under the radar. And, and speaking about crimes, um, I heard a testimony from one of our best doctors in Israel, Professor Itai Pesach. When the first hostages came, he received um, to, to look after the children and the women. And 12 children, he said, when I heard their testimonies about what they've been going through uh, under the hands of Hamas, he said, the whole country won't be sleeping at night when we listen to these young children and what they've been through. We're talking about starvation. We're talking about children didn't see daylight. We're talking about physical torturing. And we are talking about children that are whispering today because Hamas stole their voice. Okay. They're not allowed to speak. Okay. This, this is as bad as it was. And, and I'm saying to the world, look at the people we're dealing with, the people that brutally murdered over a thousand Jews. We cannot live next to them. So we need to make sure that Hamas is defeated. There is no other way to, to carry on in life in the Middle East without Hamas being defeated. I um, wanted you to lay that out as you, as you wished. Uh, I don't think anybody has any doubt about the pain of uh, Israeli people and uh, their relatives here and elsewhere. But the question is, how do you stop that happening again? Now... You're you've dropped leaflets instructing people in Gaza to retreat uh, to safe areas. One of the things that we've seen, and we're not the only station that's reported this, is that people who have gone to safe areas, and they show the Israeli instructions, you've numbered the blocks and all, they've gone to safe areas, and then they show you that those blocks have been destroyed. How can you make be sure that, for example, people in places like Khan Yunus aren't turning into your enemies again and perpetuating exactly the kind of thing you've just been talking about. Well, Trevor, that's, that's a very deep question about how we, we, we think about peace in the future. So one thing being proven at the 7th of October that Hamas regime is bad both to Israelis and to Palestinians. What Hamas gave to the Palestinian people Poverty no, and, and, and torturing the people, I'm, I'm abusing is, them, using them we, as human shields. So I'm answering you. But, Israel made sure there is a place for the people of Gaza to have their shelters. There is, sure there is, there is a, place, there is a river. Then... There is a place in Gaza called the Muasi. The Muasi is the place where they all can have shelters. Uh, together with international organizations, we created shelters for the Palestinian people. No, so but, you cannot but, say Israel is not. But, you know, no, facilitating but, but, that, but together with humanitarian but aid. Let's, let's deal with the fact that they experience it on the ground, and we've seen them, we've, our people have reported them. They've gone to the places they thought were safe, that Israel, the idea have told them, were safe, and they were not safe. Let me put it to you again. Isn't the problem, and I'm not at all saying it's easy, isn't the problem for Israel that you need to think again about the consequences of the action. And you might want to, want to carry on with it, but we need to be honest, don't we, that there are going to be more casualties here. So I, I will give you my answer. The only reason there are civilian casualties in this war is because Hamas is using them as human shields. When you see schools of UNRWA being used with, with At rockets... the United with, Nations with, Relief yes, Agency. and when you, see, when you see those masks being used as a place that they launch rockets on Israel. Just yesterday, there was a massive attack on Tel Aviv, on, on centre of Israel. Oh. That means that basically they don't care about their own people, Hamas. All right. While well, Israel does care you, about you, civilian casualties. You keep casualties. bringing me back to Hamas. I want to talk about Israel. Because let, 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 they're, let, let, they're the cause of everything. Let, let, me, let me bring it to you in this way. Um, it's not your enemies now who are asking whether Israel are, is pursuing the right tactic. The American vice president yesterday said, in terms, enough people have got, died in Gaza. Defence Secretary America said the same thing. A cabinet minister sat here this morning and said, De very different tone from the first days when we spoke before, where there was steadfast support for Israel, that we need to make sure that Israel essentially, uh, that the death toll does not rise. Aren't you risking international support uh, for Israel and 
ending up isolating your own country by your actions? Absolutely not, because uh, first of all, uh, US support is very strong and we can see that we share the same aims. I mean, if the Americans would have said, wait a second, destroying Hamas is not the right thing to do, it's not what they're saying. They're saying, you need to destroy Hamas. The UK government is but saying, not in this you way, need to perhaps. destroy Hamas. Uh, uh, we're very much open-minded to see if someone can uh, find a solution that is like a magic solution. You know, one of the ministers in the cabinet said, if you can give us a magic spell, maybe a Harry Potter stick, uh, to, to, you know, uh, make those tunnels, underneath tunnels, to disappear, we'll be very grateful. But this is not the case. We know, we speak on reality on the ground. It took the Americans nine months in Mosul to dismantle ISIS capabilities when there was no underground tunnel city. This is much more complicated than Mosul. This is why I need to make sure that everyone understands. In order to have a better future in the Middle East, in order to have peace in the future, we must make sure Hamas is destroyed. And, and this is where the Americans and UK government and other international leaders share our goals. So I, I really believe it will be for the better for both Israelis and Palestinians. Ambassador, unfortunately, I think we'll be talking about this for many moons to come. Thank you for sharing, taking your Always time this morning. Always happy to come here. Thank you. Thank you.